Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a Minecraft Java server. This is an alternative to Minecraft Realms or paying for server hosting online. This is entirely run on your own computer so it can be done for free. It gives you all the same functionality as Minecraft Realms and you have full control over the server. The first step is going to be downloading the server from the minecraft.net website. I'll have all these linked down below. Click Minecraft Server 1.18.2. There might be a later version when you watch this video. There's a whole Minecraft wiki on how to set it up. I'll have this linked down below also. Next, we're going to have to download Java. This will allow us to run the server. Click your OS tab, I'm running on Windows here, and go to the x84 installer and click the link. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and run that and install Java. Once that's complete, you can go ahead and download, delete the exe. Now, make a new folder for your Minecraft server. You can name this folder whatever you like. Then place the .jar file into that folder. Double click to run. You'll see a couple of folders and some text files show up. Once you see the eula.txt file, double click that to open it. It should open a notepad. Here, change the eula to be equal to true. Then save that file and go ahead and close it. Now we're going to edit the server.properties file. This tells what the server should run like and all the properties within it. So here I'll be setting up a normal survival world. You can go ahead and find the Minecraft wiki linked down below and it, there's a full guide on how to set it up. You can just follow the steps on screen to set up a normal survival world. For the server properties, make sure you click the Java edition. The bedrock properties and Java properties are completely different. The first value I'm changing is the difficulty. This is normal. This is normally set to easy as it is in a survival world on any device, but I'm going to change this to normal. Next, I'm going to change the enforce whitelist from false to true. This makes sure that anyone not on the whitelist cannot join, and if they are not on the whitelist, they will be kicked from the server. For the level name, you can name this whatever you like. Next, you, uh, there you can see the level seed. Here you can place any level seed you like. I'm going to be using this coastal towns seed. Then the next value I usually change is the max players. This is based on your hardware's capabilities. I'm going to be leaving it as 15 now.
Here in the properties, you'll also see a space to put a resource pack. Here you can put a link to a .zip file for your version of Minecraft. Next, we're going to have to get the server IP. You can find this by opening the command prompt on the computer and writing IP config, then hit enter. Look for the wireless LAN adapter or Ethernet if you're using that, and then the IPv4 address. Copy that and paste it into where it says server IP. Then all the way at the bottom, change whitelist to true. Once that's complete, just go ahead and save the file and close it. The last thing we have to do is the Java flags. This tells our server to run with how much memory and garbage cleanup. This prevents our computer from being overloaded with random files when it's being accessed on the Minecraft server. So first click other and then write server.jar and then change the amount of memory you want the server to use. I recommend opening task manager and looking at how much memory you have and how much is being used during idle. So around idle I use 3 gigabytes to 4 gigabytes of memory. So now I'm going to just subtract that from the total and I have around 12 gigabytes free. I also want 4 gigabytes for my game to run, so I'm going to give this server 8 gigabytes. You can change this based on how much you want. Then copy it all. And then right click in an empty space in the folder and then create a new text document. Name this startup.bat. Change the .txt to .bat. Then right click and then click edit. Now paste what you just copied. Remove the no GUI at the end. This will make it easier for us to set up now. Now we can move on to the next step. The second step we have to complete is port forwarding. This allows people outside of our network to play on the server. So your menu might look different, but go to your router settings and select the IP address of your computer, which the server is running on. Then for internal and external ports, make it 25565. This is the Minecraft port. Then select TCP UDP and save it. Once that's complete, we can go ahead and launch the server. Double click the startup.bat file and you'll see a new Java screen pop up. Once it says done at the bottom, you can go ahead and type help to see a list of commands. The first thing we need to do is type slash whitelist add your username. This will allow you to join the server. You'll have to do this for everyone who wants to join. If you don't know how to run a command properly, just scroll up and you can see the list of commands. So to make myself operator, instead of doing op add, it's slash op and then my username. Now we can launch Minecraft and join the server. Before we do that, we need the IP address. Go to this website, Port Forwarding Tester, and you'll see your external address. You can also test to make sure that it's open to the public.
Once you've launched Minecraft, click the multiplayer tab and then click add server. For the server address, type in the external address you got from the other website. Server name could be anything you like. Then you can see the ping and the net amount of players on the world. And that's all. All you have to do is share the IP address with all the friends you'd like to play with and make sure you get their username and whitelist it. In the server, you can also see who has joined and left the game. To stop the server, just type in stop. If you want to make a backup of the world, select the folder named Minecraft server or whatever you named it and copy that and place it somewhere else. 